Hello, welcome to part two of the uh, Rose Arch build. So the end of part one, which was filmed back in February, remember, I was working away on the Rose Arch in here and on a bit of a roll even. Um, and then the national situation dawned on me and I decided that it wouldn't be a good idea to deliver it on Mother's Day. And this was pre-lockdown remember so lockdown came the week after um, but having weighed it up I thought it just wasn't worth the risk it wasn't a sensible thing to do and with that I just down tools and <laughs> here it still is so this is half of the rose arch and it's been on the bench ever since my only interaction with it since February and we're now in November has been to walk into the pokey out bit every now and again and uh, yeah so I've left it there on the bench to remind myself to finish it but I just couldn't bring myself to do it even when the lockdown ended um, I didn't have the opportunity to, to deliver this to my mum um, I've got family members that are very vulnerable and it's just not worth it <laughs> it's just not worth the risk um, and now we're in a second lockdown anyway, so I thought I'm just going to finish it. I'm just going to finish the thing and then it's there, it's ready. If at some point in the future I can deliver it, that's all That's all great. If not, at least my mum can see that I've made the effort to finish the thing off. I'll clean off the bench then and get the other arch in here as well. Now we're going to need that. I think I've got enough here. I need another. This is just one half of the arch. The other half is outside where it's been <laughs> exposed to the elements since February. Yeah, it's just been sat here in the undergrowth. One of these I had the right shape. Maybe both of them. I honestly can't remember. Anyway, you can join me now and <laughs> witness my bafflement as I try and work out what I did back then and uh, how to finish it off. Let's get back inside. I'll bring this with me. Okay, it's obvious now that this one, the one that was on the bench all that time, is actually the only one that's in the final shape. This is nowhere near it. So with this one, the one that's been outside, I must have got to the point of, it's obviously been for the rollers to put in the main curve, and then I've opened it up into this shape. But you can see here the angles are all wrong. It needs to come out that way more. And then I've got to put in a bit of a kink about here. I'm gonna make this one match this one. And then I can work on installing all of these to join them together. It is at least going to be much easier to get this one sorted out because I've got something to, to go off, something to use as a template. I'm going to hold the chalk vertical and draw down both sides of this one. Get this one out of the way.
just started to blow that one. Again, I've got it pinned on that leg. Too much here. Pretty good then so far. Uh, what I'm going to do next, I don't like the look of this weld. <laughs> I'm not going to give myself too hard a time about it but because back when I did that welding, what was it January, February, whenever it was, um, I only had a generator to provide the power for the welding that's half the size of the one I've got now. So what I'm saying is now I'll be able to do a much better job on it. Ever. in power between being able to weld with this generator as opposed to the last one is incredible. So that was back in November. Then I had to stop work on this and get on with the usual seasonal rush uh, with my mum's blessing because <laughs> there was still no chance of delivering it. It's now January and it's, a, it's another lockdown. <laughs> so we're in lockdown three and I've decided to put everything else aside and finish off the rose arch, get it done. So it's not going to leave the bench now until it's finished. So I've got all these ready here, covered in sawdust. Now the usual way of making a rose arch would be to make the two arches and then the rungs that go in between would just be welded in place. Now that's quite straightforward. The way I've done it, <laughs> just, just make life difficult for myself, by punching all these holes and I'm going to effectively use these as giant rivets. So the end of each of these bars is going to be a rivet. So they'll go in and be peened over at the ends. Doing it that way will make it look really nice when it's finished, but the downside is that all of these holes have to line up perfectly before you start. Otherwise, it's all just gonna look uh, much more rustic than it's intended to. So with this type of construction, this riveted construction, these bits here go in the hole, they're a loose fit and the idea is this bit's going to be heated up when it's inserted and then I'm going to hammer the top bit here which will fatten out this bit. So where it goes into the hole it's actually going to lock in there as well as on the top. So unlike a bolt for instance which clamps from one end or if I was to weld it so if I just offered up bars on there and welded them, they would just be fixed at one bit. When you properly rivet something, it fastens all the way through the joint, so it's actually quite secure. And the end there, I'm not entirely sure what I'd do. What I'd normally do is just use a small ball peen hammer like this one and upset the end of it there so it fattens up and then keep hammering and you get a sort of 
a nice hammered dome effect to it. The other way to do it would be to do that mostly and then finish it off with a snap. And a snap is a bar of steel with a, a hole, well a hemisphere really, in the end of it, which you can then put over and hammer that and then you get a nice smooth dome. I should probably do one, <laughs> yes. We'll do a trial one first and see how it comes out. So that hole in there matches there. Obviously I couldn't just drill for a piece of 20 round like this is made of because this isn't 20 round anymore at this point because these holes are punched as she swells out there. Um, so if I just got a bit of raw 20 and drilled a hole for it, there wouldn't be any meat on the sides. Uh, but it does mean that when that goes through, there's more sticking out than there would be on this. So. so I'm anticipating the main issue with this is going to be backing the, the other end of the bar. Normally I'd do this over the anvil of course. Um, And I can see we're doing the doing the first half of the arch. It's going to be quite wibbly. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a very sturdy table, so it'll, I think it'll do as a substitute anvil. Anyway, we'll find out in a minute. happy with that. It's getting there. It turned out the best service to hit it on. Obviously when I was hitting it on the anvil I managed to hammer it through the picture hole which wasn't very good. But the, uh, the hole on the workbench where the bench vice normally goes, that's held it quite well. That's pretty much the profile I was after because this it doesn't look great on a flat bar like that but when that's on the slightly rounded profile on the um, actual arch, I think that'll look good. Now I think the splitting there was because I wasn't aggressive enough with the initial hammering down. Having had a semi-successful trial run then, <laughs> straight onto the real thing. I'm going to start with this one I reckon. Uh, before I do that I'm going to just run through all these holes with a 9mm drill bit. To make sure that there, there's enough clearance.
<laughs> I partly got what I wanted out of that. <laughs> partly. Yes. What I've got to do now is actually flip it all over. I've been wondering if it's easiest to flip this over and then try and add this bit back on or the other way around. <laughs> it's gonna, it's, yeah, it's going to be messy either way. This is the oxypropane trolley. So I've got propane, same as I use on the gas forge, and a little bottle of pure oxygen. And they go through regulators and flashback arresters and such like, and end up here in this cutting torch. Now this is a much hotter and more focused flame than the one that's in the gas forge. Setting these rivets would be a two heat process. I think that's the way to do it. So I'm going to try and set all these rivets um, and I'll flip it over the other way again, dress those ones, flip it back this way and dress these ones. And I think as I go along, I can tweak it if I need to and take out any distortion that's creeping in or any stray wibbly bits or just try and keep it as neat and square as possible. no fun at all to be honest <laughs> it was really no fun Ugh. so they're all in kind of but there's a lot of work to do yeah yeah a lot of work
going to do is clear the decks, flip it over and call it a day. So what I'm bound to do otherwise is just overdo it and then I'll have two days being useless, more useless. Feels a lot less rickety. Gonna give it a little while here. A lot less. It's the following day. I've actually spent all day, well, most of the day, on the working on the Land Rover outside. It's got dark now. I'm gonna have to go in in a minute and light the fire. It's gonna be a really cold night again. But I think I've just got time to do the rivet. So I flipped this over last night and yeah they're mostly looking all right. This one here is this bar is floating up too much but other than that they're quite good. So I'm gonna do the second heat on them and dress the heads. Um, that's all I'll do tonight. But that in itself would be a giant leap forward. I'm going to do a close up on this one because as you can see it's got a bit wonky on the first heat so I need to pull it over this way quite a bit. I think it's doable. Sorted. Close look then. So see that's just the shape I was after there now. That's enough for, for tonight but I'm glad I did that. It's really starting to come together now which is very gratifying because there were times it was that wasn't looking likely <laughs> to be quite frank. Next up then and the last major bit of work is to tidy up these bits. So where the welds are here and here I'm going to wrap that with something. This is the bit I'm on about here and this is the stuff I'm going to use to wrap it with. What I'll do is put a quick taper on the ends of these so one end will be hidden inside the wrap and the other end will be pointed and I'll sort of nestle it in there I reckon. <laughs> as you can tell I'm making this up as we go along.
No, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that material, it's not quite giving the right look. Hard to explain, I think. That reject. Yeah, Let's see what else we've got. Let's try again. Turn it up. No more oxygen. So close. Ah, oh, that really is irritating. All that messing about then, the oxygen's run out. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Oh well, I'll see you back here when I get a new bottle. So a couple of days have passed. Uh, it was annoying because I was on a real roll there. Very nearly finished the job. Uh, I had to replace the fuel tank on the Land Rover before I could go and get another bottle of oxygen. In the meantime, I've changed my idea of how I want this to look again. Previously I was starting here, that was the, the last one I did, started there, come down there and then wrapped around, coming around at an angle like that. What I'm going to try this time is starting it here. So I've just taken the very end of this bar, just hammered that on the anvil, just cold, a couple of taps and it's made a sort of wedge shape which means I can jam it in here. Now what I'm going to do now, that should hold much better than how I had it before clamping in there. And I'm going to come around and wrap it around like that, sort of a flatter wrap rather than the angle. Yeah, well, we'll see what it looks like anyway. <laughs> Close, very close. Right, I'm going <laughs> to do it again. I'm going to keep going until I'm happy with it. That's all there is to it. And at the moment, I'm not happy with it.
much better. Yes, much better. Sometimes it's just obvious how out of practice I am with certain things. It should have been trivial. <laughs> it was quite a mission. It really didn't help that I was on a proper roll um, last session before I ran out of oxygen and had to, had to quit. That's my excuse anyway. Right, that's finally acceptable. <laughs> Creepy. Next time I'm going to flip this over and do the other one. So yeah, I might as well flip it over and do it, then I can just repeat what I've just done while it's still fresh in the mind. <sighs> ah yeah, it's one bit I forgot. This needs to come down a bit. I'll do that in a minute. Right, it's not that consistent here. I might try and yeah, I'm gonna straight, try and straighten that while there's still some heat in it. I'll try and the same now, which means, yeah, just get that one there, there we go, that's it. <laughs> these bits and drop that down a tad. Done. All I've got to do now is tweak it a bit, tidy it up. Um, I'm going to stand it up, make sure everything lines up okay, and then it, that's it done. Obviously, when I put it in my mum's garden, it's going to be I'll, I'll need to de rust it beforehand and paint it, prime it, and paint it. But there's no point doing that at the moment. It's the middle of winter now, and I don't have any hope of delivering this for months yet. I'm going to stick it outside. And uh, yes, that'll be absolutely fine. It's sit out in the weather for a bit. Like I say, I'll de-rust it before uh, I paint it, so it doesn't matter.
What's really strange is that normally at this point, having built a structure of something, um, when it's all put together, that's when you've got to actually start fettling it. And that normally, when you've done lots of welded joints, that means grinding it back on each joint, grind back the weld. Um, any internal corners like that, you get the die grinder on and clean those up. Then you get the sanding disc on there, 36 grit and then 80 grit, and maybe even go to hand files and, and such, but really just go over and over it, cleaning it up. Having forged nearly all of this, there's none of that. It's just good to go. Obviously, a lot of effort <laughs> to get to this point, but now we're here, we're here. So I think these, these rungs have worked out really nicely. So where it's gone from the 16 round here, and I've brought it down by about half of that in diameter, slotted it through there, and then peened it over. Um, it's, yeah, so it's looked just, just the way I want it here, which is great. And it's strong as well. Um, so it's not terribly stable, because it's not nailed in the ground yet. Yes, I can hang off it. And even those collars have worked out in the end. So this is a job I started last Christmas. That's when I started it, I'm pretty sure. Yes, so a year ago, I remember going to I think, it, yes, it was a year ago, I went to Grandad's birthday meal um, and showed my mum some pictures of the work in progress, which at that time was just the tapers. I'd just done the tapers on the end of the bars. And here it is, a, a mere year later, <laughs> it's finished. And uh, that's just, that's probably why I don't do commissions anymore. Crikey. But finally, that's it done. <sighs> so before I before I can deliver it, obviously I need to de-rust it, uh, either blast it or um, acid, and then prime it, paint it, strap it on the roof of the Land Rover and deliver it. Before I can do that, I've got to do a load of work to Land Rover because it's, yeah, it's, it wouldn't make the journey as it stands. Uh, but that's a, that's a huge leap forward. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. I hope it's interesting. Thanks for watching. Cheers.